Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, you're very welcome. This is Read of the Past and I'm Dr Cat. And we are now a few days into February 2021, after a January that felt like it went on for approximately a decade. And I know I'm not the only one to feel this way because I have seen the memes. I suppose it doesn't help that we've pretty much had the same news headlines for the last year. And of course, that is completely understandable. Unfortunately, there are some pressing and as yet unresolved issues. But sometimes we all need an escape. An excuse, if you will, to make like an ostrich and bury our collective heads in the sand of history news. Because actually, January was a bit of a corker in that regard. Let's go. I've got a selection of stories that I want to highlight today. Most of them are fairly recent developments, so of course more information may well come out about these finds and discoveries in the coming months or even years. And I say a selection, because although there were two specific stories that led me down the path towards making today's video, I did go and have a check to see what else might have been going on. And let me just say, wow. As it turns out, quite a lot has been going on and has been reported on in month one of 2021. I've cherry-picked a few of my favourite stories to talk about with you all today, and I'll be leaving links to the news sources for each of those stories in the description box of this video. But first, let's start by looking at the two stories that first piqued my interest in making this video. The first story I came across talked about the discovery in late 2020 of a medieval Chinese coin that was minted between 1008 and 1016, meaning that it comes from the period of the Northern Song Dynasty. The coin was found in a field in Hampshire. It is 0.98 of an inch and it's made of copper alloy. This coin represents the second 11th century Chinese coin to be unearthed in England, with the first being discovered in Cheshire in 2018. The more recently discovered coin, the one in late 2020, was found near another coin, minted much later, during the reign of King John in the early 13th century. Also nearby to this second found Chinese coin were two 16th century coins. After the find of the 2018 coin, researchers from the British Museum were of the opinion that it was, quote, more likely a more recent loss from a curated collection, end quote rather than being something that came here in the medieval period. However, with this second, more recent find, an argument is being made that counters this. The Cambridge historian Caitlin Green thinks that the 11th century Chinese coin may well have arrived in England in the 13th or 14th centuries. She argues that this is supported by evidence of there being interconnected diplomacy networks that complemented the Silk Road trade route which linked East and West. Green refers to there being documentary evidence that an Englishman acted as an envoy from Genghis Khan in the 1240s. Additionally, she points out that there are records that indicate that a Mongol envoy visited Edward II in 1313. Green writes, Such a potential 13th or 14th century context for the arrival of an 11th century Chinese coin in Britain is not only supported by the archaeological evidence, but also by documentary sources. These texts make reference to both the presence of people from Britain and Ireland in East Asia and the presence of people who have or may have travelled from these regions in Britain during the 13th and 14th centuries. Next up is the news that it would seem that 2021 has started out really well for one metal detectorist. It all began in 2017 when Kevin Duckett located quite the find in a field near Market Harborough in Northamptonshire. It's claimed that what he found was a solid gold and enamelled figurine of St Henry, as Henry VI was once venerated as being. Following years of research, it is now believed and claimed that this two and a half inch tall figurine 
may well have originally sat in the Tudor Crown Imperial that was made for either Henry VII or for his son, Henry VIII. This crown, which now exists only as a replica, on display in the royal pew of the Chapel Royal at Hampton Court Palace, was used in the coronations of each of Henry VIII's children. The survival of this piece comes as a fairly large surprise to many of us, as it was thought that the whole crown was lost after it was taken to the Tower of London to be melted down on the orders of Oliver Cromwell in 1649. When you've executed a king and abolished the monarchy, what need is there for crowns? Just how this piece of the crown, if that is what it is, managed to survive and end up in a field near Market Harbour does remain a mystery. The object is still being examined at the British Museum, but currently it is thought that it may be worth over two million pounds or 2.7 million dollars. If Mr Duckett has found what many believe that he has, then he will of course be required to sell it to a museum and for a price that will be determined by an independent board. If past fines are anything to go by, then Mr Duckett could be looking at a healthy little windfall. Of course, he will have to split any proceeds from any sale of this item with the person who owns the land on which the object was found. However many ways it ends up being split, however many people are involved, I'm sure they're all going to think that this is quite a happy start to 2021. We're staying in Northamptonshire for this next story, on the site of a proposed new housing development near the village of Overstone. There, archaeologists from the Museum of London Archaeology have uncovered evidence of settlement, in the form of buildings, objects, including so far approximately 150 brooches, 15 rings, 2,000 beads, 25 spears, 40 knives and 15 shields as well as personal objects such as cosmetic kits and bone combs. Also found there are burial sites that span two distinct periods. There is an early medieval collection of finds from around 1500 years ago and a Bronze Age one from around 4000 years ago. The project manager Simon Marcus explains the significance of these finds saying, quote, the human remains will tell us about diet, health, and even the origins of the people themselves, whilst their buildings can teach us what their day-to-day -day lives were like, and how they utilise the local landscape in these two different periods. The next news item looked at what archaeologists from the University of Cambridge have been up to, because they have been digging in three of their local graveyards. And in doing so, they excavated 314 sets of human remains. Cambridge is today, of course, home to one of the most famous universities in the world. But the journey towards that fame, towards that reputation, only began in 1209, so the very start of the 13th century when the university was founded there. The burials that are being investigated by the team date, however, from the 10th to the 14th century, so at least some of them were there from before the scholars began flocking there in their droves, at a time when the majority of inhabitants in the town were artisans, merchants and labourers, like farmhands. The cemeteries investigated by the team were across three separate sites, and they seemed to have served three fairly different populations. In their work, the archaeological team have been able to reveal just how risky life could be for the medieval labourer. This next quote comes from the BBC News report on these digs. They found that 44% of working people in the parish cemetery had bone fractures, compared to 32% in a wealthier one and 27% in a cemetery for the infirm. The study had therefore helped to gauge the hazards of daily life, the team said. The research catalogued the nature of every break and fracture on 75 skeletons from an Augustinian friary which buried wealthy donors alongside clergy, and 155 buried at the charitable hospital of St John the Evangelist, where the infirm and destitute were interred. However, they found the highest number of fractures on the 84 skeletons from the parish graveyard, called All Saints by the Castle. Dr Jenna Dittmar, who is from the university's Department of Archaeology, explains that we can see that ordinary working folk 
had a higher risk of injury compared to the friars and their benefactors, or the more sheltered hospital inmates. We can see this inequality recorded on the bones of medieval Cambridge residents. However, severe trauma was prevalent across the social spectrum. Life was toughest at the bottom, but life was tough all over. £600,000 has been raised by the National Museum of the Royal Navy in Portsmouth. In this sum, they had help. They got £212,800 from the National Heritage Memorial Fund and £200,000 from the Art Fund. This money was collected together to buy 10 hand-drawn ink and watercolour maps, thought to have been produced in 1589. The maps depict the defeat of the Spanish Armada, which of course occurred in the previous year. These maps were in danger of leaving the country. They had in fact already been sold to another buyer, whose name I can't find as of yet, but they had paid that original £600,000 fee, up and until the culture minister intervened and imposed an export ban on the maps until January 2021. She called on them to be purchased for the nation by a museum or other institution. Fortunately for us in the UK, that is what happened. And now the National Museum of the Royal Navy is looking to raise more funds so that they can put these maps on public display. I'm going to leave a link to their website in the description box so you can check out the maps themselves and also have a look at their fundraising efforts if you should so choose. The last news item I want to discuss is only here, and I will freely admit it, because when I looked at the headline, it absolutely triggered my petty button, because Barnard Castle is back in the news. Astonishingly, this time it's not being used as a makeshift and impromptu eye test location by a former advisor to the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Small mercies, I guess. With that being said, this time the location is in the news in a way that shows it would, in fact, be a pretty great place to play I Spy. Nevertheless, if you are in need of an eye test, I recommend an optician. On the 31st of January, readers of the Northern Echo were informed that they could go hunting for carved boars in the fabric of various buildings in their town, including the castle itself. These boar are the surviving emblems of Richard, Duke of Gloucester, the man who becomes King Richard III. Barnard Castle had once been owned by Richard's father-in-law, but after his death at the Battle of Barnet in 1471, it comes into Richard's own possession. Richard would then proceed to improve the castle building and also a number of buildings in the surrounding town, including St Mary's Church, another location where you can find a boar. I believe that the surviving presence of these carved boar testify that Richard, Duke of Gloucester, was a man keen to make his mark on the world. And although his kingship and life came to an abrupt end at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, it's comforting to me that these traces of the man still remain. But what do you think? What do you think of the news stories that we have discussed today? Were there any other items in the news in January that piqued your interest that I haven't mentioned here? As I did state, if I do find any updates to any of the stories discussed today, I will be sure to let you know about them. As always, I am looking forward to reading your conversation in the comments section underneath this video. Or you can come and find me over on my social media. I'll leave links to my Instagram and Twitter in the description box. You can follow me there and we can continue this conversation. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up. Please also subscribe to the channel. And while you're there, why not hit the notification bell beside the subscribe button so that YouTube tells you when I've next uploaded. I hope you're gonna have a great day, whatever you're doing. And I look forward to speaking to you all in my next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.